What we're looking at here are all my finds from 2013, at least most of my finds. My water finds I already put away. But what we have to decide now is how are we going to display these things. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can put everything in what we call a Riker mount or box like this, which is cool if you, know, you don't have that many relics. But once you start to get this many relics, I mean there's over 50 sites here. It's probably will take me 70 boxes, 70 of these Riker mounts to put everything in here and put it on display. I don't have enough wall space for that, and most people don't. So you end up with just stacks and stacks and stacks of these Riker mounts. And when you want to show somebody your collection, you got to pull these out and go through them one by one, and that gets extremely boring. Within a few minutes, you know, your guest eyes will glaze over, and they just want it to end. It's worse than looking at baby pictures. Big stuff like this, no problem. I can just write on these things or attach a label to it and put it on display. The other things like this. What I do is I put them in jars. I get a jar like this, which is just a pickle jar, and I cut them in half. And I can stack the stuff up in here from each site, and I can label it so you know right where it is. And you can see everything, so it's like a 3D Riker mount. Now I can put 50 of these jars on a shelf where it would take me walls to put up 50 of these. And I'm going to show you how I do that and what this collection would look like if it was all in jars. So let's get to that. So several ways you can cut the bottles. One is to buy one of these bottle cutters at a place like Walmart. They cost $24 and they're junk. This is what you get. Um, you can actually cut bottles with them. It'll take you a long time to figure out how to use it. You'll probably waste about 80% of them. But once you get good with it, it does work, but they don't last very long. I've gone through two of these and uh, decided I had to do something else because I cut a lot of bottles. Now this is going to look scary, but it really isn't scary. This is what I would recommend you do. I know it seems like it's kind of extravagant just to cut bottles, but this is called a wet saw. It's normally for cutting tiles and bricks and stuff like that. There's actually a water reservoir in here. And this blade spins. This is a diamond blade, and it, it goes through the water so it keeps it cool. Now this saw looks expensive, but it isn't. You can get one like this at Home Depot for $54 which is only twice what this thing cost at Walmart, this little piece of junk. So for two times the money, you can get this thing and it'll last you forever for cutting bottles and you can cut other stuff with it like rocks and tiles and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on for you and show you that it's really not that dangerous. It looks a little scary, but it isn't. It's supposed to have a guard here, but being a typical guy, I just took the guard off. So I had to put a little paste around here to keep the water from flying everywhere but it's not a dangerous uh, machine. Let me show you this. So this blade is whipping around. There's actually water coming off of it right here. My hand's getting a little wet, but you can touch this thing, look. So, you know, it's not as scary as it looks, especially a cut bottle. So let me go ahead and fire it up and I'll show you how to cut the bottle and what we do next. So this is what we end up with. This is all the stuff on the table in the jars. Now I have to make the labels for them. For now I just put the uh, pieces of paper in there. What you do is you stack it in the jars. You put your buttons and you know your fragile stuff on top. If there's any certain buttons, well here's a little neat little arrowhead I meant to show you. It's pretty cool. 
But anyway, yeah, anything fragile you put on top, if you have any really good buttons or coins, you, know, you can put separate. But this way, I know where everything in my collection came from. Fortunately, there was one jar short. I have to make up another jar. The rest of that stuff I'm going to label individually uh, and put on display. Let me show you real quick what some of the jars look like on the shelves. As you can see, you can look right into the jars and see all the neat relics. I'll put the nicer stuff on the outside so you can see them or right on top, like some of the little buttons. Every one of these is marked with the site. You can see the label right here, but I have them turned around so you can't read them because I don't want you digging in all my spots. But you can also use these big plastic ones. These are presso containers, and they're really good if you have a ton of stuff from one spot. Have to be a little bit careful when you use the big jars like this because if you fill it chock full of bullets, sometimes they will crack. You know, they don't like shatter in a million pieces, but a crack will develop. I've only had that happen when they're completely full of bullets, so I'm a little bit careful about that. But isn't that a neat way to display it? Otherwise, I'd have 100 Riker mounts all stacked up on the floor, and you'd have to look through them one by one over the course of about three hours just to get through everything. And boy, is that boring. And that's all, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.